So here in chapter three, what I thought I'd do is show you several different uh, paintings and how I compose them. I'll show you the uh, structures I used, the tricks and rules I use, and also show you how I use the principles and elements to create solid, dynamic, interesting compositions. I'm also going to point out several things I don't like about some of these compositions. So the first one we're going to use is we're going to start simple, and we're going to start with Winter Perch Black Cap Chickadee. Now this one was uh, put together on a couple of uh, simple principles and it also has a big no-no that I don't like in it that we're going to point out. So the first principle we used was dominance or emphasis and the chickadee is the dominant or focal point of this painting. Now your first question is probably like okay well how did I be make that chickadee become the dominant focal point? Well I used contrast and you can see up here in the chickadee's head the high contrast between the almost pure black and the almost pure white creates the highest contrast in the painting. Now that is a key point. Your eye will always be drawn to the point of the painting that has the highest contrast. So keep that in mind when you're building. So you see the black and white here? That's the highest contrast in this whole composition. So our eye is naturally drawn there and it's naturally going to uh, create the most visual weight. Now another principle that I used in this composition was repetition of texture. And you can see that I have that very fluffy texture in the snow along the branches, branches. And how I replicated that was by spattering falling snow around the background. And what that did is it created a, a bond or unity between the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. Now I also used repetition of color. And you can see this rusty brown that's in the tree limb in the chickadee's head and then down here at the bottom in these needle sprays and that created a circular repetition of color that makes the eye travel all the way around the canvas. Now the one thing I didn't like was this uh, this highlight in the top left hand corner and it's uh, supposed to be one of those diffused uh, through the tree lights and I made it uh, too high in uh, intensity. It has, uh, it draws too much visual weight and what it's doing is it's competing with the chickadee on the right hand side. Now this is what's called a uh, dual focal point which is not a bad thing but it needs to be done correctly and that means if you're going to have two focal points one has to be dominant over the other one. This one I think is too close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Photoshop and then I'm going to take the circle I'm going to down its value or its intensity a bit and you see how now it becomes softer and it doesn't compete with the little black cap chickadee. So as we move on we need to start incorporating uh, as much tricks of the trade as we can. So let's change our piece now to Northern Vigil and here's the whole composition and what I'm going to introduce you right now to is called a rule of thirds. Okay, Although some people call it golden thirds. And what it is, is really it's a guideline. And if you see, see if we take this composition and we divide it up into thirds, this grid gives us a, a, a suggestion of where would be a good point to place points of interest or focal points. So as you can see, I've placed our deer, which is our focal point, right at the intersection of the top left hand third. Now thirds can also be a, a good way of dividing up your composition to make it more interesting. As you can see, the forest contains only uh, or is only uh, present in one third of the uh, composition, the top third. And then the snow consists of the bottom two thirds. So you can also see that on the right hand side, if we go in one, one line, you can see that I've created that strong dominant snow finger at the foreground. It only comes out a third. So you can see I've used thirds quite a bit in this. So think of thirds as a way to really break up compositions and make them visually strong and very well anchored. Now this uh, composition has just about every principle uh, that's known to man in it. So let's go through them one by one and see how I've used those principles to create a very strong, dominant, visually pleasing composition. 